In a nation already on a high state of alert, the response to this latest incident was swift. According to local media, at around 10 o'clock local time, two men armed with knives entered a church in a suburb of Rouen as a service was taking place. It's believed five people were taken hostage, including a priest and two nuns. Officials say the priest was killed with a blade and another person has been seriously injured. The two attackers were shot by police. The two assailants left the church and they were shot dead by the security forces. Investigations are underway. We know that one man has been assassinated and one other person has been seriously injured and is fighting for life and is receiving treatment from rescue and firefighter services and from the medical teams. Operations continue, but the hostage-taking situation is definitely over. The church is in saint etienne du rouvray According to French media, the alarm was raised after one of those being held by the hostage-takers managed to escape. Elite security units were quickly at the scene. The area remained cordoned off as investigators carry out their work and the church is searched for explosives. The priest has been named by the Archbishop of Rouen as 84-year-old Father Jacques Hamel. A Vatican spokesman said Pope Francis was horrified by the news. French President François Hollande has visited the scene. He said the two men who attacked the church had claimed to be from Daesh, using the Arabic name for the group calling itself Islamic State. Once again, we are safe. We are facing another challenge. The threat remains high, very high. What we have lived over the past few days and even few years we are facing a group of IS who has declared war against us. We should face up to this war using all the means within the respect of the law. Forensic teams are expected to stay at the scene for the rest of the day. France's anti-terrorist prosecution unit has said it has taken over the investigation. Daniel Bircher, BBC News. Well, I can't add much more to what that, that very comprehensive report, but one thing that is being reported on the media in the last quarter of an hour or so um, is not a formal identity of one of the attackers, but the reports of one of the assailants. Uh, he hasn't been named, but uh, the, the, what we're hearing on the radio and television is that police recognised visually one of the two bodies of the attackers and recognised him as a, a local man who had tried to go to Syria to join so-called Islamic State in 2015, been turned back by the Turks and had come back to, to France and, and been under some kind of control, maybe um, an electronic bracelet. Uh, it's not entirely clear. Um, well, the only threat is that innocent people are getting attacked and killed. Um, the motives um, are different in each case, although so-called Islamic State has so far claimed uh, that it was behind the Nice attack, the one in Ansbach, and the axe attack on a German train. I suspect they may well claim responsibility, or I use that term loosely, for this hideous attack in a, in a, in a church. Um, it's important not to put them all into the same box, because what happened in Munich, the killing spree with nine people killed, turned out to be a disturbed young man who had mental problems and was nothing to do with so-called Islamic State. That's in no way to exonerate Islamic State from the horrors that have been taking place. But that attack was far more akin to the kind of university campus rampages that we've seen in the United States uh, in recent years. I have to say that the French police have reacted, I think, with commendable speed and efficiency in closing this down. They've been heavily criticised for failings and mistakes made in, in Nice, along with the authorities. In this case, they've closed this down rapidly and minimised the loss of life.